Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Welcome to the first video in the letter combination series where we will begin by explaining the process of learning letter combinations and how I will go about it in uh, this video series. And inshallah you will benefit from the method of teaching that I will adopt. There have been different methods I've learned through online and it's kind of been a mess. So I've tried to organize it for you guys in a way that might be simple. And so what we're going to do is go from the beginning of the alphabet all the way to the end and take each letter to learn the beginning, the middle and the end shape of the letter. Um, and as we move through the letters, we will take example words as well and see how that applies within those words. And inshallah, that should be um, perfect. So for instance, today we will discuss harful ba in the beginning. So you have that shape first. Then you also have this shape for harful ba. You also have this hook-like shape. And this slanted sort of S shape. And finally, just this straight up shape that looks like number one in Arabic. Now, this isn't going to be as clear right now because I'm using a, a pen and not the calligraphy pen. But it'll be evident and we'll discuss what each of these formats is used for and when it's used in the correct context. And then in later days, we will discuss the middle and the end portion. But for now, let's just begin with this and then move on to learning... Uh, a few example words with that. Just to begin, the first and probably easiest form is going to be the this shape of the bat. We're going to take this as the number one shape, the first shape. And you're going to have to put the pen on the right angle as usual. Remember, create that box, divide the box in half, and find your angle. And we're going to start around half a nuqta above the, the baseline. So now, we didn't discuss about the baseline much in the past, but you will realize that the baseline now is probably more important than ever. So half a nuqta above the baseline, we're going to start. And we're going to go down and out. And you want to end on the line. Okay, that is a very crucial point. Probably one of the most crucial points in ruqa is to always keep the line in reference. This shape of harf al-ba is used with many things, it can be harf dal or more commonly explained in examples as harf alif okay? And harf alif in this case, you can go up or you can go down, it's, it's up to your preference. I've seen people do it both ways, okay? And this could be a little more lowered down, but it should be fine. Again, remember the slantation I discussed in a very early video about harf alif. Khat is not a straight, it's not a straight uh, script. And so I'm not writing flat on the line and going straight and vert vertically up. The whole word is at an inclination. You see the first beginning is at an inclination and the entire alif is at an inclination. So if I draw a line from there, you'll notice that there's a little gap. The alif here, the normal alif is one nukta. The alif here is going to be four nuqtas high. That's how long the alif is going to be in this situation. And this first portion for harf ba or harf ta with that, remember, harf ba is only the baseline for harf ta or harf ta, right? This portion will be two nuqtas wide. Okay? And this is going to be a consistent thing when we move on to other formats and you need to remember this because we will explain it once and we won't explain it when we do those other forms because it will be pre-assumed. And it's roughly half a nuqta above the line, as you can see here. Right? 
You can even make this a little bit lower. That should be fine. So that is the first format. The second form of harf al ba is similar to this, except you have a little portion that is similar to harf al dal, but it's not exactly, it's a little shorter than harf al dal. Again, we want to make sure that we will end on the line. Okay, so I'm going to take this into consideration and go a little bit higher. So we're going to have something like that in this little nukta shape with a preparatory curve in the end. I keep I'm sending the preparatory curve because that's something I mentioned earlier in the past. And I keep mentioning again, preparatory curve is going to be crucial moving on. This portion, head portion, is going to be around a nukta's worth. Okay. And the second stroke is going to be the same as this one. So we're going to take it from where we left off and we're going to go down and out. Two nuqtas. So this is, you know, this measurement, this stroke is the same as this stroke and this is going to be in two nuqtas exactly how this was. And then if we were to take an alif, same exact thing, we're going to have an alif to be four nuqtas high Right, four noctas high and also at, at the same inclination. Okay, and the reason I say same inclination is because when we go into writing sentences, in other words, you always want to make sure that you know your entire uh, line or word, the things in it are consistent, and there is no variation. And if you notice, there is a variation in the curve. So like this is more vertical than this, or this is more, you know outwards than this that inconsistency will take away from the beauty of the writing and so remember a lot of the beauty comes from the symmetry in the writing so you want to make sure that your entire line is symmetrical you want to make sure that your strokes downwards are always going to be consistent and on the same level if one stroke is you know more vertical than the other then there's inconsistency that and that's going to take away from the beauty so remember those points as you move through